One technique I've mentioned both in Patch and Tweak and in some posts I've made online is the idea of taking your normal envelope and running its voltage output through a filter to add some additional warbles to it on its way to your normal destination, such as the cutoff of the main filter in your voice. I'd like to demonstrate that here. Now, for the purpose of this trick, there's two types of filters. One that is DC coupled, which means it can pass just pure voltage, like a sustaining envelope. And the other is AC coupled. It only passes audio and will go down to zero volts if you try to push a normal voltage through it, such as the sustain of an envelope. The random source surge variable Q is DC coupled. The dope for WASP is an example of something that's AC coupled, and we'll play with both. There's also a module dedicated to this technique called the Sly Grogan. It's out of an old copy of Electronotes, and I'll demonstrate that in a separate movie. Right now, I just have a normal ADSR patched through my scope so I can see it on its way to the filter cutoff in my Mother 32. The blue trace is the envelope being fed to the filter. And we'd like to modify the shape of that envelope to make it more interesting. I mean, this is nice but it could have a little bit more articulation or animation to it. So I'm gonna take this output, which is a molt basically from my envelope, and run it to the input of a DC coupled filter, such as my variable QVCF here. Then I'll take the output of my variable QVCF, run it to a, say the green trace of my scope, just so you can see what's going on, and then route that to the cutoff of the Mother 32's filter. By the way, you'll find out that different filter responses will give different results. We'll play with that as well. Okay, initially I have this in this normal audio range, very low Q, fairly low frequency. And the green trace is very similar to the blue trace with just a little bit of overshoot. But as I start to lower the frequency, you see this little bit of a warble pop in. That's the resonant frequency of this filter or where the cutoff is. The Q amount is how many warbles we'll get, how much resonance, how much feedback, how long that oscillation lasts. If I go all the way down, I get just a small bounce at the very start of the envelope. If I crank up my Q, well, it's almost an LFO at this point, but triggered by the envelope going through this filter. Now the variable Q VCF also has a low range where it takes you into very slow warbles. Go ahead and you see that's actually taking a long time to rise up to the sustain level. Let's go ahead and give it some more resonance. So now it's oscillates up and down. And increase our cutoff. Again, the green trace is the output of the filter with our envelope run through it. A DC coupled filter almost acts like a slew generator with the addition of this resonance. You can even get into audio rates. Start to FM the filter. But we'll take it back down to more LFO like rates. Just to a single hump or something that lasts for a while. So this gives a little bit of an articulated bounce to the sound. A little bit of a double attack there. Now the problem with this being a slew generator is that it is knocking some of the sharpness off of our attack there. What if we want a particularly sharp attack, but then want these warbles to happen afterwards? Well, then we have to go into a AC coupled mode where we can separate the warbles introduced by the filter from our normal envelope, maybe add them together separately. Now it just so happens in this particular filter, if I looked at the high pass output instead, 
We're getting basically an AC coupled response where we return to our baseline here. Again, the blue is the original trace from the envelope. The green is the output from the filter. It's the same colors here. And again, we still have control over its frequency, how long it rings out. modulating it audio right there and getting another tone out of it. But anyway, what we really want to do is take this new output and add it in with our envelope. So let's grab a couple more cables and bring a utility mixer into the game here. So I'm going to pull the output from the scope and instead run that into one channel of my utility mixer. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a copy of the envelope's output. Down here is a copy and run that into another input on my utility mixer. The last thing we need to do is unravel our cables and then take the output, go into the cutoff of the filter, and take that from the output of our utility mixer, and get my cables out of the way so you can see what's going on here. Okay, I'm going to bring up the normal envelope. And indeed, let's go ahead and repatch that so you can see what's going on. I'm going to take the output of this mixer and instead run it into the yellow trace on my scope, which is nice and visible, and then take the output of that trace and run that to the filter. Okay, so the yellow trace is the output of our mixer, the blue trace is the output of our envelope generator, the green trace is the output of our filter. Right now I've got a pretty good level here on the envelope, matching to the original level pretty closely here. Let's start bringing in the warble caused by that filter. Now you see in the yellow trace a little extra detail in that attack. Let me capture that quickly so you can take a look at it. And you see where it follows the green trace, but it's been added into the underlying blue envelope shape. Go back to running. Now I can go ahead and play with the frequency and how long resonance rolls out here and mix in our two shapes to taste. Get a little extra LFO action here during the sustain part of the envelope. Or bring it back up with reduced resonance make it part of the attack. Now the fun thing about having a utility mixer is you can also invert some of your sources. Right now, as you can see from the yellow trace, the transient coming out of this particular filter is positive going. So it's being added to my envelope, creating an extra loud peak. Without it, we just have, but with it, Go to a lower cutoff. Get a little extra bite that opens the filter even more. But we also invert the contribution of the filter to create a different envelope shape. Kind of a um, horn blip attack there. Let's set up a slow arpeggio so you get to hear this a little bit more in context. Now here's the normal edition. Just a nice little attack transient there. Again, the normal envelope sounds like this. But with our extra blip, a little extra bite there. But if I subtracted the peak of the filter's contribution by inverting it, it softens out the attack, but we still have that extra double bounce of that resonance. Again, we can get, go up into FM range. of that attack. Now again, the different outputs of the filter have different responses. 
bandpass is different again. Let's go ahead and lower the frequency. Much more soft and rounded. That's subtracting the output of that filter from the normal envelope. Here's adding it. So we get some different envelope characters that way. And also just so happens that a feature on the variable Q filter is it has a separate trigger in. So rather than processing the leading edge of our envelope, it goes ahead and derives from it its own impulse and it gets yet a different sound. Much more concise sort of peak as you can see. Go back to the high pass. Notice that it's inverted as well. So let's go ahead and invert that. Get that sharp attack again. That'll splat at the start. Turn down the amount. A little bit of sustain. Whoops, down here in this envelope. Now the resonant frequency of this filter is out of pace with the arpeggio, creating its own traveling modulation. Let's speed it up. Get a more interesting composite envelope. Again, the blue trace is our normal envelope, sounds like this, and the yellow composite's like this. You hear a little extra warble at the end after I release the note. So that's using a particularly versatile filter, the variable Q filter. But you can use almost any filter in your setup to do the same thing. For example, you can use the Dope for Wasp filter. Let's just go ahead and quickly patch that over to see what that's going to look like. So I'm going to take my envelope output, make that my audio input on the Wasp filter, take from its output its low pass, high pass output for now. And again, the green trace will be just the Wasp filter's output, the blue trace is the original envelope, and the yellow is the composite between the two. I'll remove my inversion for now, have a fair amount from the Wasp filter. You can see the wasp has a little downward spike in response to the envelope going through it. Let's go ahead and lower its cutoff frequency, slowing down that spike, increase it to be faster. Since it's a negative spike, it's basically taking away from the peak of the envelope. We can go ahead and invert it so it adds to the envelope. Now that extra little splat at the start of the note. Lower pitch, higher pitch gets sharper. And again, we can use resonance to go ahead and add warbles to carry on after the initial attack. We're kind of up in audio rates here. So we get quite a bit of complexity. Now remember, the Wasp is well known for being kind of an unstable filter at full feedback. Almost an FM type sound there. We're going to slow it down. Just to give us our normal warble. And let's set up another arpeggio here. So again, we can hear it in context. depth so that this audio rate modulation on the attack carries out longer to the point where it's just unstable. Or 
I can slow it down to where it's more of a um, tremolo. Again, the green trace is the output of just the filter, so you can see how it's changing. Now, one of the nice things about the Wasp filter is it has a continuously variable output from low pass to high pass. That too changes the character of the spike. As I go more towards high pass, it sharpens up a bit. Kind of around there, I like. Again, if I was to take this out of the circuit, so it's just the normal envelope, it would sound like this. So the filter's contribution is adding that complex spit at the start. Now a little bit of an FM attack. Back to the low pass output. A little bit more chewy of a sound because it's a slower vibration. Quite a range of envelope shapes just by adding a fairly inexpensive filter on the output of our envelope, mixed back in with the original envelope to go ahead and drive whatever we want to.